Okay, one thing that ticks your pastor off more than anything is when some person acts like he's smart and know-it-all, and then he attacks the book, and then he attacks other Bible believers for uh, not being educated as much. Yeah, so some of these pansies would actually call me an abusive cult, some of these pansies. And these people are, they make years living off of money, attacking the King James Bible, and bullying and belittling Bible believers for not being educated enough. And then when I preach one little sermon, then they call me abusive. Yeah. So it shows how childish these people are. They want to be abusers. They don't like to be abused themselves. So this knucklehead, he gave a challenge to what he called Reform TR proponents. So he gave this ridiculous challenge as if that he can win a victory against the King James Bible. So Judas White, or a.k.a. James White, he said this, Present a consistent, repeatable method of textual critical analysis that, upon application to the currently available handwritten Greek manuscripts, would produce the text of the so-called Textus Receptus in the book of Revelation. If you claim your methodology is defined by scripture, please explain with scripture how your method was derived. Okay, there are several stupid fallacies with this idiotic argument from this wicked man. So this man, he gives a challenge. Now this is more particularly aimed to the TR, so I will aim for that one. Now, you might say, what is TR? So, in our previous studies concerning the King James Bible issue, I explained to you what this is. This is Textus Receptus. And Textus Receptus is the Greek manuscripts where our King James Bible came from. So, we defend Textus Receptus quite often. Now, his challenge is this. He wants to aim for the book of Revelation. Why is that? Because the TR has some troubling areas in the book of Revelation. So because the TR has some weaknesses in the book of Revelation, what James White wants to do is that he wants us to use the current Greek manuscripts available today and see how we can use this to defend the readings of the TR. Now, this gives no pressure to King James Bible believers. You might say, why is that, Pastor? Okay, here's one reason why, which is more simple than you think. We are KJV. We are not TR. Amen. We are KJV. You might say, but KJV came from TR. Right, but TR does not make up everything in the King James Bible. Amen. Amen. So the King James Bible came a rich line of manuscripts. Yeah. So we would like to call this the traditional text or the text that came from Antioch, Syria. And then from this came out many different manuscripts in different languages. It's not just necessarily Greek. There were many other manuscripts. And then because of that, the KJV came from a wealth of all sorts of manuscripts in line with the traditional text. So that's why we believe in the King James Bible rather than the Textus Receptus Amen. because the King James Bible is such a superior culmination of all manuscripts in line from the traditional text, which comes from Antioch. And then this guy, because he wants to act scriptural, he wants to say, please give me a chapter and verse. Please give me scripture for that one. Okay, you know what? You know what's so stupid about that argument? Well, that's uneducated that you say stupid. No, because look up in the dictionary, what does stupid mean? It means stupid. That's what it is. He does not have scripture to prove his method of textual criticism either. Yeah. This repeatable method of Greek manuscript. Give me chapter and verse, stupid. See, what, an, what idiocy. This is a hypocrisy at its finest. He wants to give us a burden that he himself cannot even do with scripture. You want me to give you scripture for this? I'll give you scripture for this. Go to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. Wow. I don't want to get on your bad side, Pastor. Good. So don't attack that book. Don't act like some educated snob who belittles Bible believers. And you and I will get along fine. Just fine, man. 
Again, I told you this before, there are many people who don't know about the King James Bible issue. There are even people, sadly, who would go for modern versions rather than the King James Bible. I totally understand where they're coming from. King James Bible, to them, not to us, because, you know, it took us spiritual years to develop, but to them, the King James Bible is hard to understand, and sometimes they don't see a big deal and a big difference. But where I really kick hard is that when you attack the King James Bible and you act like some educated snob when you actually don't know anything at all, and then you criticize Bible believers for not graduating from accredited schools or prestigious schools when you yourself did not graduate from an accredited school or a prestigious school either. You loser you. So these kind of people, these are just hypocrisy and liars at its finest. They want to put a burden upon Bible believers that they themselves are wearing themselves. Yeah. Wicked, evil people. All right, Acts chapter 11. Now look what the Word of God says. We're going to read verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in where? Antioch. Okay, look at verse 19. This is where first time Christian came from. You like that? Look at verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the what? Word Amen. to none but unto the Jews only. Look at verse 20. Uh, and some of them were men of Cy Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to where? Antioch yeah. spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. So look at this. The word of God was proclaimed from where? Antioch. Where did the KJV come from? Manuscripts from Antioch. Amen. There's your scripture, Judas White. Yeah. Now what about your beloved critical text, from Alexandria, Egypt? You know what the Bible says? Look up, all, look up all the verses in the Bible that mentions Alexandria, and you tell me what the Bible scripturally thinks about that. Exactly. It's negative. Mm -hmm. In fact, let me give you the most positive reference on Alexandria. You ready? Here's the most positive reference on Alexandria. Go to your Bibles to Acts chapter. Open your Bibles to Acts chapter 18, verse 1 through 3. Now look at this. Look where it begins. After these things, Paul departed from Athens, and came to Corinth, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them. So there's Aquila and Priscilla that Paul ministered to. So these people were directly trained from the Apostle Paul. Now remember, the Apostle Paul was responsible for writing the majority of your New Testament. Look at chapter 18, verse 24. Chapter 18, verse 24. This is the most positive reference you're going to ever get on Alexandria. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at where? Alexandria. An eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. Now look at this guy. You'll notice in verse 25, This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the Spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when, now remember Aquila and Priscilla, these were lay people trained by the Apostle Paul. Now look what they did. Apollos was an educated person from Alexandria. They're eloquent. See, that's where Apollos came from. That's why they like the critical text. They like the Alexandrian text because it came from an eloquent, scholastic, philosophical area. But look what, what these two lay people did with Apollos. Come on. Look, verse 26, And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expand, expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Amen. See, he needed help with his scriptures. You know what that's like? That's like taking Brother Max and Brother Robert, taking James White aside and teaching him about more of the scriptures. Not even Gene Kim teaches James White. See, that's how, that's your most positive reference on Alexandria, Egypt. Yes, there were scriptures out of there, but guess what? They were incorrect. They weren't perfect. 
So you see right here that Antioch is, the most po is more positive scripturally in evidence. There's your scriptural evidence, Judas White. This kind of nonsense. Give me scripture. You liar. I like to hear your scripture, man. I like to hear your scripture. Now here's another thing. Is that Now let's talk about the textual issue here. So Revelation, it seems to be very weak concerning the TR, where the King James Bible came from. And that's not a problem for us, because like I told you, it came from all manuscripts in line with the traditional text. It doesn't have to all come from TR only, TR only. But here's the thing, is that this stupid challenge is invalidated. It's not, he, he should drop this challenge. You might say, why? Because he's always a hypocrite. He's always a liar. He wants to give you a burden that he himself cannot fulfill. That's his tactic. So let's put him the same kind of burden as well. I want you to use the available Greek manuscripts today and use this to challenge your beloved critical text. Do that with him. You know what you, you see right here with the case of Revelation? Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, which I mentioned to you earlier to turn over. Now let's cover some of these areas. Notice in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Okay, the beginning and the ending, it's not mentioned in your NIV. So James Y, he would recommend the NIV as a better Bible compared to the King James Bible. He would like the critical texts, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. He would like those manuscripts better. But here's the problem, is that if you look at the evidence, most Greek manuscripts contain the word in your King James Bible. Give me the Greek manuscripts of it. Yeah, most of them, but your NIV don't have it. It's liar, liar, pants on fire. Wicked man. Not only that, his Sinaiticus and its Aleph 2 supports it as well. Wow. Wow. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> and then what does the NIV have? Oh, Aleph 1. And then NIV. But mo most Greek manuscripts have the reading as your King James Bible. All right, Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. Oh, well, watch, man. One of these Calvinist trolls who are watching us online, who are supporting modern Bibles, they're going to be showing this video to Judas White, and then, he's, and then they're all trolling us, and they're going to say, look at his attitude, look at his demeanor. He's so abusive, the way he talks. That's what he's going to do. You know why? Because he's used to belittling Bible-believing Christians. So then when he's belittled himself, he wants to put the pressure on you that you're unloving, you're abusive. What about your attitude, huh? with uh, the over a hundred debates that you bragged about. Okay, Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 holy. Okay, pastor, what are you doing? I'm reading you what, what, the, other, what the different manuscripts or versions would read. So literally, holy is mentioned eight times. <laughs> But the King James Bible is three times here. It's three times. So the funny thing is this, is that Holy Holy is mentioned three times within our King James Bible reading. But what's very interesting is this, is that if you look at, I could be wrong, but it is nearly all, if not all modern versions, it's nearly all modern versions have Holy Holy three times. Why is that, Pastor? Because you look like a doofus saying, holy, 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 Joe, right? You know, see, that's, you just look ridiculous. So obviously it's holy three times right here. But the thing is, is that, okay, if, they, if their modern versions like to go by Sinaiticus, it's very funny that Sinaiticus would have holy eight times. Oh, so what happened right here? You know, now you got the modern version that contradicts the Sinaiticus when you say Sinaiticus is such a great manuscript. I would like for you to challenge Sinaiticus with the book of Revelation. Don't pick on which Greek manuscript you want. You wicked liar, you. You biased, prejudicial, bigot, you. Yeah. All right, that's just two verses. Just two. Let's look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. 
man, pastor, I don't want to get on your bad side. Good, good. All right? The only way you're going to get on my bad side if you attack that book and then you attack Bible-believing Christians who love that book. You're going to really get on my bad side. All right, Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So notice right here it says, He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword, right? Okay, in the different modern versions, including your NIV, if anyone is to be killed with the sword, he must be killed with the sword. So that's the reading in the NIV. But guess what? Sinaiticus says, He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Oopsie daisy. Yeah. Oopsies. Mm. Oh, oh uh, wrong again. Okay, so let's look at Revelation chapter 14, verse 3 now. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man can learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. So notice right here that the text says, uh, Revelation 14, verse 3, as it were a new song. Now, what you're going to find out is that that phrase, as it were, would be found in the Texas Receptus. And it is also interesting that it is also present with their Nestle Allen Greek text. Now, the Nestle Allen Greek text is the standard text that critical Greek scholars use today which is based off of, uh, which supports a lot of Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, etc. But you know what's really funny? Their final authority over there is that Sinaiticus omits the word, as well as the NIV and the New American Standard Bible. Oh, by the way, here's something more funny, okay? How many people know about the famous thing, who are the 144,000? Who are the 144,000? <clears throat> You're wrong! Sinaiticus says 141,000. You ever seen that? Did you ever seen that on YouTube? Who are the 141,000? You know, people aren't going to click that. They're like, what is this? So weird. You know what they're going to be doing? Uh, amateurs who don't know Greek and Hebrew, just a common YouTuber, is probably going to comment on that guy's video, you spelled it wrong. You know, it's, it, it should be 144, not 141. Oopsie daisy. I mean, ridiculous nonsense, these people. Okay, by the way, if that was, they just made another boo-boo at the very next verse, if that's not enough. The very next verse, verse 4. Okay, notice that it says right here, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Sinaiticus, it would read, these were redeemed from among men from the beginning unto God and to the Lamb. Uh, but the NIV, the ESV, the New American Standard Bible doesn't follow the Sinaiticus right here about from the beginning. So you see right here, we are not majority text, textus receptus, final authority like that. We are not like that. But not only that, you got to realize this, they got a problem with their own manuscripts as well. Now this is where you catch them. Okay, I was going to say this at the end, but I might as well say it now since I'm carrying on this subject. So both sides have an issue here. It's not like that when we have a, a text or a manuscript that the modern Bibles are all going to follow along. So then how do we know which reading is right and correct? It's not just by the manuscript evidence. You got to realize this. It's not just the certain Greek manuscript evidence you select they're going to go to other manuscripts to support that evidence. That's why the modern Bibles will choose that reading. That's why their Nestle Allen Greek text will choose that reading, even if it conflicts their beloved Alexandrian manuscript Sinaiticus. Why? Because it's a common fact that you can't just go by one manuscript. You go by different manuscripts. And then you use your judgment and discernment to pick the right reading, which is what the King James Bible did the same thing as well. Amen. Okay, TR, TR, come on, man. We can do the same thing with you. Sinaiticus, Sinaiticus. We can do the same thing too. Your NIV, NASB, ESV, etc. Oh, by the way, you still didn't get the right Bible yet. Amen. And then you, you have the audacity to correct the King James Bible? Amen. You, you didn't get the right one yet? Yeah. 
Why don't we work on correcting your Bibles, huh? You ever seen James White make a living correcting the ESV? Or is, does he make a living correcting the King James Bible, making books off of that? How about that? Yeah, I'm going to develop a lot of friends after this. Go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 9. Revelation chapter 20, verse 9. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down, notice right here, from God out of heaven and devoured them. Okay, that phrase, from God out of heaven, it is supported, guess what? Majority of Greek manuscripts available today. Uh, concerning the Andrea side. We also see different Greek manuscripts here, P046, P051, and those are supposed to be of the second order of cited witnesses, which is pretty strong. That's only below the first uh, cited witnesses of the order. You also have Old Latin and Syriac. Okay, what is the available Greek manuscripts for the NIV right here? Well, the NIV, it deletes God. I mean, I guess God is not important to them, and they only put from heaven. So what's the manuscript evidence? A and PC. What, is P, what does PC mean, Pastor? It, re, it means few. That's your manuscript evidence for the NIV. That contradicts the King James Bible. Why, looky, looky right here, man. Wicked, dishonest people. So what do we do? This is very simple. It's not by picking, again, let me say this in closing so you can get it. You don't just pick a certain Greek manuscript as your getaway card for all the verses in your Bible. Because modern version scholars know that's not how they do it. Neither do we. You know what you do? What you do is that you pick, what you do is that when you look at the history and the manuscripts, you pick the best manuscripts. So then, in our case, we like TR better. We like the traditional text that came from Antioch, Syria. We like that because that's the greatest evidence. So when you compare Alexandrian and then the traditional text, the evidence is greater for traditional text concerning history, textual evidences, all that kind of stuff. Okay? So then we choose traditional text. Now they like to go by Alexandrian text, but it's going to be weaker. Now both of them have a problem though. Both of them have weak areas. And we already covered the verses at Revelation. So it's not just TR. Alexandrian manuscripts too. So what does a scholar do? This is what a scholar does. They look at internal Greek evidence. They look at other manuscripts or ancient witnesses. Most important of all, you look at doctrine. You look at the verse. And by proper context, you can find the proper translation. Amen. That's what they do. That's normal. That's educated. That's the right and professional way to do things. Yeah. You know what an amateur is? An amateur is, oh, TR, yeah. oh, Sinaiticus, oh, blah, blah. You're an amateur, man. You're not educated. You're not smart. That's a dumb argument. And Judas White knows that too. So retract that challenge, man. That is the, most, that is the dumbest challenge I ever heard. One more thing here, okay? <laughs> One more thing right here. Look at Revelation chapter 6. All right, I spent too much time. All right, this is the last, last verse, I promise. We're done. Revelation chapter 6. All right, now let's use context here, okay? Let's use context argument right here. Because you will see how this is the case where you can't just resort to a certain type of manuscript to support the argument. That's not how it's going to work. You have to compare all the other evidences as well. All the different arguments and rational rationalizations and reasons out there. You have to compare everything. All right, look at verse 16. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the who? The lamb, right? Okay, is that Jesus Christ? Is that the, his wrath? Okay, for the great day of their wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? Did I read that right? Right here, the King James Bible it says, for the great day of his wrath is come, right? In the modern, in different Bibles or manuscripts, it says, for the great day of their wrath is come. Now, let me ask you, okay, don't use manuscript, okay? Forget Greek and Hebrew here, okay? Let's use some common sense here, okay? If we say for the great day of their wrath, 
when just six words ago you said from the wrath of the who? Lamb? Don't you think that's incorrect? Yeah. Yes, you, yes, yes, you don't need to know Greek and Hebrew. You don't even need to know English for this. This is common sense. Whose wrath is this? Is this the, the wrath of the Lamb? Is this one singular person? Or is it a bunch of people? It's Jesus Christ for the great day of their wrath. What in the world, man? Do I need a Greek manuscript for that? No. No, you don't. And this is logical when you look at what? So we compare doctrine. If we want to be, if I want to give more scholarly than that in case some people want to say, oh, you're picking doctrines? No, this is not picking doctrines. This is just common sense. But aside from that, it's contextual. Context demands that. Yeah. That is normal with translation and manuscript evidence. Not only that, it's not just contextual. It's also internal Greek evidence and then et cetera, et cetera. We can go on and on and on. Okay, so the dumbest challenge on the internet is still probably over there. Guy doesn't have rocks for brains, man. Doesn't have rocks for brain. Because his, his head looks like a rock. He doesn't have hair on it.